Tired of the same old transportation solutions? Imagine electric cars that never need charging and aircraft that power themselves. Meet Maxwell Chikambutso, the visionary behind these game-changing technologies revolutionizing Africa. Maxwell Chikambutso isn't just innovating, he's rewriting the future of Africa. Born in the humble town of Harare, Zimbabwe, not Malawi as many assume, Maxwell's story begins in the heart of one of Africa's most economically challenged environments. Raised by a single mother in a tough neighborhood, his early life was marked more by struggle than opportunity. But from a young age, Maxwell displayed an insatiable curiosity about how things worked. He would often dismantle household gadgets, not to break them, but to understand the mysteries hidden inside. Radios, televisions, even electric fans became blueprints for his young mind. Without formal training or access to expensive educational materials, Maxwell relied on shortwave radio broadcasts and old engineering books to build his foundation in science and mechanics. By the time he was a teenager, Maxwell had already created his first functioning radio transmitter, cobbled together from scrap and instinct, which he used to broadcast locally in his community. This early innovation set the stage for what would become a lifelong mission to solve Africa's biggest problems through technology born on its own soil. What separated Maxwell from other bright minds wasn't just his creativity, but his deep sense of purpose. His belief that Africa could do more than consume foreign tech. It could build its own. He saw firsthand how the continent's dependency on imported technology hindered progress, stifled self-reliance, and kept communities in cycles of poverty. Fueled by this awareness and an unyielding passion to change it, Maxwell launched his first formal project in his 20s, a generator that could produce power using radio frequency signals. This invention, which defied conventional understanding, attracted both skepticism and astonishment, and marked the beginning of his journey toward energy-independent innovation. Despite lacking a university degree, he founded Seth Technologies, a company that would become synonymous with radical African innovation and a hub for his visionary projects. With Seth, Maxwell set his sights on an even more ambitious goal, revolutionizing the way Africa moved, starting with electric vehicles that could operate without being tethered to the grid. In a continent plagued by inconsistent power supply and limited infrastructure, traditional electric cars were impractical luxuries. But Maxwell saw an opportunity for a new kind of machine. He developed an electric car prototype that used a unique combination of energy harvesting systems to generate its own electricity, effectively removing the need for external charging. This car, dubbed the Seth EV, not only functioned autonomously in terms of energy, but was also affordable to produce and maintain, making it a truly African solution. Rather than importing parts from Europe or China, Maxwell insisted on using locally available materials wherever possible, aiming to create a fully homegrown automobile. The unveiling of the Seth EV sent ripples through the tech community, both locally and abroad, as experts struggled to understand how such a system could function reliably. Instead of relying on lithium batteries alone, the car used a fusion of renewable energy principles, including electromagnetic fields and kinetic motion conversion to perpetuate its charge. This meant that the more it moved, the more it generated power, essentially transforming the limitations of travel into a source of energy itself. Though critics questioned the scientific basis and demanded peer-reviewed validation, those who witnessed the car in action were stunned by its apparent success. Videos emerged showing the EV traveling across long distances without ever stopping for a recharge, a game-changer for rural communities where electricity is scarce. Suddenly, mobility was no longer a luxury but a right, accessible, sustainable, and proudly African in origin. The impact was immediate in pilot locations, where local transportation improved, emissions dropped, and small businesses gained a new edge with cost-efficient logistics. Maxwell didn't stop at land vehicles. He was already dreaming of the skies, a place where African innovation was all but absent, yet ripe with possibility. He began sketching out designs for a self-powered aircraft that could lift off and fly without the need for conventional jet fuel or massive battery storage. While traditional aviation requires enormous energy resources and infrastructure, Maxwell envisioned a lightweight aircraft that generated its own thrust and sustained flight through ambient energy harvesting. His early prototypes, built in modest workshops with custom-designed components, shocked observers when they achieved short but controlled. 
Flights. These test flights were not without their hiccups, instability, weather interference, and technical limitations, but they proved that the core concept had legs, or rather, wings. Maxwell's self-powered aircraft, if fully realized, would mean an entirely new mode of transportation for landlocked regions and isolated villages across Africa. Air mobility could become as accessible as road travel, enabling medical supply drops, remote education access, and interregional commerce without the need for airports or fuel logistics. The environmental implications were just as dramatic. Zero emission flights powered by the surrounding electromagnetic environment would redefine aviation standards. This was not simply about flying. It was about reimagining how Africans connect with one another, how borders are bridged not with politics but with technology. Still, skepticism remained a constant companion for Maxwell, who was often accused of being more dreamer than engineer, more magician than scientist. But rather than fight the doubt, he leaned into it, inviting independent observers, scientists, and investors to examine his work, asking only for open minds and honest feedback. The courage to be transparent in the face of cynicism became part of his brand, and slowly, support began to build. First from local communities, then regional leaders, and finally international observers. Behind every invention was a clear vision, empowering Africa from within, not with charity, but with ingenuity, not with dependency, but with bold self-determination. As his projects expanded, so did his team, composed largely of young African engineers, technicians, and visionaries who shared his passion for progress. He mentored them personally, often reminding them that greatness doesn't require permission from the West, only belief in the value of African thought and problem-solving. His labs became incubators for creativity, where students tested hypotheses, challenged norms, and built devices once thought impossible, all in the spirit of Pan-African progress. It wasn't just about making things, it was about creating a new narrative, one where Africa leads, invents, and exports not just minerals and raw goods, but complex technological solutions. Maxwell's legacy was being written not in textbooks, but in the lives of those who found new purpose under his guidance, in the towns that found new hope through his inventions. Even as global tech giants began to take notice, offering buyouts and collaborations, Maxwell remained fiercely independent, choosing sovereignty over profit, mission over fame. For him, every vehicle built, every flight taken was a declaration. Africa is not the future because others say so. Africa is the future because it is building it today. The aircraft hummed softly against the wind, a machine born not of vast military budgets or Western laboratories, but from the garage of a determined Zimbabwean man who refused to believe that innovation had borders. As Maxwell Chikumbutso's self-powered aviation prototype soared gently above the dry African earth, it carried more than electronics and wings. It carried the dreams of a continent long denied a seat in the cockpit of global innovation. The first successful flight over open territory stunned skeptics and inspired onlookers, among them farmers, students, and local entrepreneurs who had gathered with cautious curiosity and left with blazing admiration. This moment represented more than a technological milestone. It was a message in motion, a visual statement that Africa was not just catching up but creating something new, something previously unimagined. Unlike traditional aircraft, which require carefully maintained infrastructure, fueling stations, and vast investment, Maxwell's model was minimalistic yet profound, designed with rugged resilience and an eye toward remote serviceability. Its core systems were developed with sustainability and redundancy in mind, able to utilize radio frequency energy and kinetic capture as the basis for propulsion, reducing reliance on any external energy inputs. Though theoretical scientists questioned the feasibility of continuous flight without standard fuel, field tests showed undeniable functionality, with the aircraft completing loops over several kilometers without power loss. The materials used were lightweight composites, many developed through collaborative efforts with local African universities, marking another step in Maxwell's commitment to grassroots scientific empowerment. Engineers and students alike were invited to witness tests, study design elements, and even contribute to refinements, reinforcing Maxwell's philosophy that knowledge must be democratized to truly change lives. This open source spirit wasn't just a strategy. It was a calling, driven by Maxwell's belief that Africa's youth, when equipped with tools and trust, could rebuild the future block by block.
Beyond the skies and the roads, his vision stretched. Deep into Africa's social and economic veins, where unreliable power and transport had long blocked education, healthcare, and trade. By decentralizing power generation through his radio frequency technology, Maxwell was simultaneously attacking the energy crisis and fostering new business models in underserved regions. Villages that once went dark by sunset now flickered with LED lights powered by microgenerators based on his energy innovations, bringing not just light but hope. Water pumps began to operate in areas previously dependent on seasonal rains or costly diesel, providing year-round access to clean water and agricultural reliability. Entire communities were transformed not through donations but through design, through functional systems that did not require external maintenance or foreign expertise. It was this African-first, sustainable-centric model that began to ripple across borders, drawing attention from technologists in Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, and beyond. What began as isolated workshops became cross-country collaborations, as Maxwell opened his labs to thinkers and builders who shared the hunger to solve uniquely African challenges. More than a scientist, he became a connector, linking innovators from different tribes, languages, and ideologies through a shared dream of technological independence. His aircraft project, still in iterative development, began branching into modular variants, smaller drones for medical supply deliveries, larger man models for remote regional flights. Each prototype had different specs but shared the same DNA. Clean energy, low maintenance, adaptable form, and a rejection of Western cost structures that made flight elitist and inaccessible. Maxwell didn't just want Africans to fly. He wanted them to own the sky, to innovate within it, to feel that the clouds belonged to them just as much as the ground did. Educational programs followed quickly, with Chikambutso establishing technical partnerships with local schools to create aviation and energy design curricula grounded in African contexts. Rather than importing foreign textbooks, students learned by building scaled models, experimenting with frequencies, and tackling real-world problems in their own backyards. The programs quickly spread, inspiring a new generation of youth who saw in Maxwell's work the embodiment of their own suppressed aspirations. These were not students looking for jobs. They were students training to create industries, pioneers in their own right, hungry to learn, build, and teach others. In a country where brain drain had become the norm, Maxwell's initiatives triggered a reverse trend. Engineers returning home, minds reconnecting with the soil that had birthed them. The economic effects began to show in subtle but powerful ways, new workshops, 3D printing hubs, local fabrication centers, and clean tech repair shops emerged around his project sites. Employment bloomed not through bureaucracy or foreign aid, but through pure innovation, where every challenge solved created 10 more opportunities for local enterprise. Women-led cooperatives began assembling modular solar kits based on Maxwell's designs, distributing them to remote schools, homes, and clinics with training materials in local dialects. Youth groups formed tech brigades, learning to build, install, and maintain energy systems as part of national service, treating engineering as both civic duty and a career path. Maxwell's refusal to patent many of his ideas puzzled global business analysts but made perfect sense to those who understood his mission, not profit, but progress. He knew that in a continent where resources were hoarded and inequality rife, liberation would not come from secret formulas but from shared blueprints. The Chikambutso way became more than just a methodology. It became a mindset, a call to every village, township, and city to create rather than wait. Though his inventions attracted offers from powerful global interests, including military and energy conglomerates, Maxwell remained firm in his stance. Africa must build for Africa. He declined deals that would have outsourced production or relocated his operations, insisting that every screw, circuit, and manual be made or translated locally. His team, now numbering in the dozens, worked not in ivory towers but in converted warehouses, outdoor test tracks, and community garages, proving that high-tech didn't require high capital. Stories poured in from across the continent, of a girl using one of his energy kits to light her home and finish school, of a small medical post powered through one of his microstations. In South Africa, a logistics company adapted one of his EV platforms into a cargo hauler, reducing costs by 40% and cutting delivery delays in rural zones. In Uganda, 
Teachers used portable broadcast systems based on his early radio designs to teach during blackouts and in areas lacking internet access. The true measure of Maxwell's impact lay not in patents filed or awards received, but in the thousands of lives silently reshaped by accessible, functional technology. Still, he never saw himself as a savior, always redirecting praise to the communities that adopted, adapted, and elevated his inventions beyond his own expectations. His life story became part of school curricula, not as folklore but as living proof that even without elite education or foreign endorsement, African minds could and must lead. He partnered with regional ministries to fund scholarships, apprenticeships, and innovation fairs, using his own earnings to ignite the next generation's imagination. In every keynote address, workshop, or radio interview, he repeated a single mantra, Africa must believe in herself before the world can believe in Africa. And believe she did, villages built solar rigs from his templates, schools set up EV test tracks, and airports requested feasibility studies for his hybrid aircraft. What began as one man's experiment had turned into a continental movement, a slow-burning revolution powered not by politics or foreign investment but by self-determination. In the twilight of his 40s, Maxwell began drafting a broader manifesto, part autobiography, part technical digest, part roadmap for a continental technological renaissance. He called it Africa Ascending, the blueprint of invention. And in its pages, he wrote candidly about failure, ridicule, doubt, and the importance of patience. He detailed not just the how of his inventions, but the why, the emotional, spiritual, and cultural forces that shaped his work and gave it purpose beyond function. The manuscript was circulated among African universities before publishing, sparking dialogues between departments of engineering, sociology, and philosophy. For Maxwell believed that science without soul was sterile, that invention must walk hand in hand with culture, history, and humanity to truly uplift a people. By the time international media fully caught up with his impact, Africa was already moving, building, and dreaming faster than any headline could capture. From the Seth EV rolling over gravel roads in Zimbabwe to the gliding wing of the Chikambutso aircraft skimming the winds above Malawi's plains. The vision was real. It was tangible, it was African, and it was just the beginning.